The 4AF gasoline engine is composed mainly of these parts. You will learn the specific procedures for disassembling three sections of the engine, the timing belt, the cylinder head, and the cylinder block. First, how to remove the timing belt. First, loosen the alternator and remove the drive belt and water pump pulley. Then, remove the spark plugs using an appropriate SST. For each cylinder, check the spark plug for carbon deposits and signs of burning. Remove the cylinder head cover. Turn the crankshaft in the running direction to align the timing marks on the camshaft timing pulley and crankshaft timing pulley. Position the number one cylinder at compression top dead center. Remove the crankshaft pulley using three different SSTs. First, loosen the crankshaft pulley bolt, then remove the pulley. Remove the timing belt covers and timing belt guide. At this time, with chalk or a similar marker, draw an arrow showing the rotating direction on the rear side of the timing belt and idler pulley. This enables keeping the same fit of the timing belt. Loosen the idler pulley bolt. Loosen the timing belt and temporarily tighten the bolt. Then remove the timing belt and idler pulley. Be careful not to bend or twist the timing belt excessively. Do not allow the belt to come into contact with water, oil, or steam. Remove the crankshaft timing pulley and camshaft timing pulley. This completes removal of the timing belt. Next, the cylinder head is removed. Remove the distributor, water pump, alternator, carburetor, and manifolds in advance. Measure the camshaft thrust clearance. To do this, attach a dial gauge vertically to the camshaft end and move a screwdriver back and forth in the clearance. The standard clearance values are shown here. If the clearance exceeds the maximum permissible value of 0.11 millimeters, replace the camshaft or the cylinder head. Remove the intake and exhaust camshafts. Turn the intake camshaft until the service bolt hole comes to the top. With the service bolt hole in this position, the number one and number three cylinder cam lobes will push their valve lifters evenly, minimizing the load from the valve. Then remove the number one bearing caps of the intake and exhaust camshafts and remove the oil seal. Holding the intake camshaft with a wrench, secure the subgear to the driven gear with a service bolt. Remove the intake camshaft bearing caps in this order, number 5, number 2, number 4, and number 3. To remove the bearing caps, uniformly loosen the bearing cap bolts little by little. For the number three bearing cap particularly, loosen the bolts very carefully, little by little, in several passes, so that excessive force is not applied to the thrust portion.
To remove the subgear by removing the intake camshaft, mount the hexagonal wrench head portion of the camshaft to a vise using a protector made of aluminum or the like. Insert two bolts in the service holes of the camshaft subgear as shown. Inserting a screwdriver between the two bolts, remove the service bolt while removing the camshaft. Remove the snap ring using an SST. Remove the wave washer, subgear, and camshaft gear spring. Since the subgear is retained by the camshaft gear spring, be sure to fix the subgear with a service bolt. Then remove the camshaft. To measure camshaft gear backlash, reinstall the intake camshaft with the subgear removed and the bearing caps on the cylinder head. Moving the camshaft, measure the backlash with a dial gauge applied vertically to the teeth surface of the exhaust camshaft gear. The maximum permissible backlash is 0.3 millimeters. Turn the exhaust camshaft so that its knock pin comes to the position shown allowing the number one and number three cam lobes to push their valve lifters evenly. Remove the exhaust camshaft bearing caps in this order. Number five, number two, number four, and number three. When removing the number three bearing cap, loosen the bearing cap bolts little by little, carefully, in several passes, as with the intake camshaft bearing caps. Now the camshafts have been removed. During these procedures, be careful not to apply excessive force to the camshafts or damage the thrust portion on the cylinder head side with the tool or other object. This could cause problems such as camshaft seizure or breakage after the engine is reassembled. Now the cylinder head is removed. Using an SST, loosen and remove the 10 cylinder head bolts in this sequence. Then remove the cylinder head and gasket, taking care not to scratch the cylinder head and cylinder block surfaces. Disassemble the cylinder head. First, remove the valve lifters. Using an SST, release each valve spring retainer lock. Then, remove the valves, valve spring retainers, compression rings, and valve spring seats. Remove the oil seals. This completes cylinder head removal. Now let's look at the procedure for removing the cylinder block.